the Honorable President of India, Gandhi Bias. I would like to thank you most heartily, sir, for giving the students of the Tata Building India School Essay Competition a chance to be in your august presence. You're aware, sir, that the Tata Group has always believed that nation building should be at the heart of enterprise. And what better way can there be than to ignite the minds of the future leaders of our country by stimulating them to think about ideas that are good for the country and for her people. It is exactly with that in mind that in the year 2006, the Tata Group started off with the Building India School Essay Competition, initially in the English language and only in six cities, covering about one lakh students from around the country. However, because of the extraordinary response that we got from the schools, the faculty, and the students themselves, we have extended this program consistently over the past eight years. And today, sir, we cover 25 lakh students in 170 cities of the country, 6,000 schools. And the good news is we have moved not only from, to English, but have covered Bengali, Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, Odia, as well as now more recently, Telugu and Malayalam. So you can see, sir, that today's prize winning students who are in your presence this morning, they have come from almost every nook and cranny of the country, 170 cities, and really represent the, the heart of our great nation. The process that is followed in the essay competition is as follows. Normally, a film, an inspiring film of the Tata Group is shown to the students prior to giving them a topic on which they will write a short essay. And once they've seen this film and have got their ideas clear, they start penning down their ideas. And then the same essays are assessed at three levels, at the school level, at the city level, and then at the nation level. And today, sir, you are meeting the students who are the prize winners of the national level competitions from all the languages and all the 170 cities that the thing was conducted in. To give you a flavor of what the students have been thinking and what they have been writing, I have the great pleasure, sir, in inviting a, a prize winning student who will share with us her essay with you, and then I'll invite somebody else also. To start with, I'd like to invite Ishani Basu Majumdar, who will be speaking to us about her essay, which was on what can we do to reduce poverty in India. For your information, sir, Ishani Basu Majumdar is from Shiliguri, and she represents the St. Joseph School, and was a second runner-up in the English section in the fifth edition of this competition. Ishani Basu Majumdar. A very good afternoon to the Honorable President and to all the others who are present here. I am Ishani Basu Majumdar, and I have studied at St. Joseph's High School, Siliguri. Unfortunately, a major portion of India's population lies below the poverty line. So unless and until we provide the three basic amenities of food, shelter, and clothing to every citizen of India, eradication of poverty is impossible. Healthcare facilities should be provided for all. Education should be provided to every individual citizen of India. Only if the citizens are educated, development and progress of a country is possible. Job opportunities should be expanded to ensure a job for every individual. The various resources which are available in India should be utilized to their maximum potential. Self-dependency of the not so privileged class should be encouraged. Cheap loan facilities should be made available to the people below the poverty line to promote entrepreneurship. Development of the agricultural and allied sectors should be encouraged. Money lenders should be abolished. Financial incorporation measures should be strengthened for inclusive growth. Even after 65 years of independence, India is still a developing country. 
to achieve the status of a developed country, eradication of poverty is absolutely essential. Thank you. Honorable President, and to my all friends, a very warm good afternoon. My name is Sane Siddiqui, and I am presently studying in Allahabad Public School. Today, I'm standing here to give my views on the topic that is how we can make our surrounding cleaner and greener. Before that, first of all, I'd like to describe the meaning of cleaner. It means our surrounding must not be messy or dirty. And now the second one that is greener, it is concerned with protecting the environment. Let me tell you why there's a need to conserve our environment. To protect the biodiversity and to maintain the ecological balance, there's a need to conserve environment. We must not use fossil fuels. Instead of that, we must use CNG and unleaded petrols. Afforestation must be increased through Chipko movement. There's a need to conserve environment by creating awareness among citizens. We must say no to the crackers and the plastic bags. The guiding principle should be three R's, that is reduce, reuse, and recycle. Farmers have to avoid using chemical pesticides and other toxic substances which are used for increasing production. More and more natural sanctuaries and national parks should be made for the better preservation of the wildlife. These things are necessary so that uh, because we can uh, save our earth through by following these steps. And last one that is conclusion is that we must plant at least 10 saplings in our life. Only then we can save our earth from the pollution because a tree is a lesson of life. It has patience. It, has, it stands facing the sun, rain, and storm uncomplaining. And the next one is that today increasing pollution can be controlled only through the aware citizens because great things are not done by impulse but by series of small things brought together at last but not least i want to say our kare nirmal bharat ka nirman save us save your lives and save trees please for you and for us thank you